that's a live road. Yeah. Yeah. As well as making brilliant music, Roger has been speaking out on the rights of men and women for many years, and I thank him warmly for initiating this extraordinary event to celebrate and defend Julian Assange. Roger regards Julian as a hero, and so do I. And, and it'll be a pleasure to introduce Julian's brother, Gabriel, who is here from Melbourne. Gabriel went with me recently to visit Julian in Belmarsh Prison and was deeply moved by the treatment of his brother. Behind us here, of course, is the Home Office, the polite name for Britain's Interior Ministry. The behaviour of the British government towards Julian Assange is a disgrace. A profanity on the very notion of human rights. It's no exaggeration to say that the treatment and persecution of Julian Assange is the way dictatorships treat a political prisoner. There is one reason for this. Julian and WikiLeaks have performed an historic public service by giving millions of people facts and why and how their governments deceive them secretly and often illegally. Why they invade countries, why they spy on us. Julian is singled out for special treatment for one reason only. He is a truth teller. His case is meant to send a warning to every journalist and every publisher. The kind of warning that has no place in a democracy. I spoke to Julian at the weekend. He'd been just allowed to have his first proper exercise. He was allowed to pace up and down in a small bitumen yard. However, at Belmarsh Prison, they have a sense of humour. On the walls facing the so-called exercise yard are happy, clappy words about the blades of grass beneath your feet. But there's no grass. Julian is locked up for more than 21 hours, sometimes longer. It's four months, four months since he was dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy, literally, in brutal contravention of international law. It's four months and he is still denied the documents and the basic tools to prepare his case against an outrageous demand for his extradition to the United States where he faces incarceration and almost certainly torture. And yet he is not allowed today to call his American lawyers. He is not allowed access to vital documents. He is not allowed access to a computer. He is confined in a single cell in the hospital wing where he is isolated most of the time from other people. <clears throat> All this, all this because he infringed bail, a bail order, the merest of offences, and he sought political asylum from the threat to his life that awaited him in Trump's America. When I asked Julian what he'd like me to say today, he was adamant. Say it's not just me. It's much wider. It's all of us. It's all journalists and all publishers who do their job who are in danger. In other words, the danger Julian Assange faces can easily spread to the present and past editors of The Guardian, The New York Times, Der Spiegel, El Pais in Spain, the Sydney Morning Herald, 
and many other newspapers and media outlets around the world that published the WikiLeaks revelations about the lies and crimes of our governments. Never before in my career as a journalist have I known such an attack on our most basic freedom to publish and to know. The message is loud and clear. Be careful or you too will end up in an American hellhole. Journalism is not a crime in the United States, not yet. But if Julian is extradited and convicted, it will become a crime. Journalism that does its job and tells people what governments do behind their backs in their name. Julian is not an American. He is an Australian citizen. WikiLeaks, which he founded, is not a US-based publication. But the meaning of his extradition could not be clearer. No matter who you are or where you are, if you expose the crimes of government, you will be hunted down, kidnapped and sent to the US as a spy. 17 out of the 18 charges that Julian faces in America relate to the routine work of an investigative journalist, which is protected under the First Amendment of the US Constitution. The 18th charge about hacking doesn't even relate to him, and even the prosecution over there say that. The whole thing is a sham. The US prosecutors know it's a sham. A federal judge recently declared effectively it's a sham. The British government know it's a sham. The Australian government knows it's a sham. That's why Julian is locked up more than 21 hours a day in a maximum security prison and treated worse than a murderer. Why is that? Why is he not protected? by international law, as the United Nations Working Party has demanded. He is to be made an example, that's why. What happens to Julian Assange and to Chelsea Manning is meant to intimidate us, to frighten us into silence. And the moment that we fall silent, it's over. By defending Julian Assange, we defend our most sacred rights. Speak up now, or wake up one morning to the silence of a new kind of tyranny. The choice is ours. Thank you. Just before I introduce Gabriel, I'd like to say that on the 28th of September, at 2 o'clock outside Belmarsh Prison, there'll be a demonstration by Julian's Defence Committee supporters. So now I'd like to introduce Julian's brother, Gabriel. I'm Gabriel Shipton, Julian's brother. Last month, I went to visit my brother Julian in Belmarsh Prison. It had been a year since I had seen him last. I hugged him and he told me this place he was in was hell. I instant, instantly understood what he meant. A yellow inmate's armband wound tightly around his arm, exposed how emaciated he had become underneath his baggy prison clothes. In his eyes and voice were the signs that this hell was working its hardest at crushing any hope he had left. This visit we didn't laugh. There was nothing to laugh about. I held back tears as I realised this could be one of the last times I see him. Afterwards, my daughter wanted to know why her uncle was locked up 
Has he done something bad, Dad? She asked. I struggled to explain in a way a five-year-old could understand. As Julian's brother, and on behalf of his children, other brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, mother and father, I call on the UK Home Secretary to block extradition to the USA.